Chapter 1 Hard de Forêt d'Orléans Deep within the heart of occupied France, the ancient oaks of the Forêt d'Orléans stood as silent sentinels, their gnarled limbs reaching toward the heavens, as if in silent supplication. A cathedral of emerald leaves filtered the sunlight, casting dampened patterns on the forest floor, a mosaic of shadow and light. Beneath this emerald canopy life teemed. The air was alive with the symphony of the forest, the rustling leaves in the gentle breeze, the trill of unseen birds, the scurrying of small creatures through the undergrowth, the tang of damp earth and pine needles filled the air, a grounding scent that spoke of resilience and survival. Yet this tranquility was a fragile illusion. Pierced by the distant growl of mechanized beasts, a rumble of Nazi patrols on the roads beyond the forest's edge. In a hidden clearing, shrouded by thickets of hawthorn and bramble, sat two figures who seemed as much a part of this ancient woodland as the trees themselves. Marcus and Charles Lefebvre, brothers in arms and in blood, their faces etched with the lines of hard-fought battles and a lifetime of shared experiences. Their bald heads, tanned and weathered, gleamed in the dapple light, mirroring the smooth-worn surfaces of the river stones scattered nearby. Their full beards, as gray as a lichen clinging to the oak bark, flowed down their chests, giving them the aspect of wise druids, guardians of this hidden sanctuary. Their weathered hands, calloused from years of working the land, now expertly disassembled and cleaned the components of a sten gun. Thick-rimmed glasses perched precariously on their noses, magnified their eyes, eyes that had witnessed the horrors of war firsthand, yet still held a spark of defiance. The sunlight as it filtered through the leaves, danced across their lenses, momentarily obscuring their gaze before revealing the steely determination within. The bond between the Lefebvre brothers ran deeper than mere fraternity. Born and raised on a modest farm on the outskirts of Orleans, they had been inseparable since childhood. Their shared journey had woven a tapestry of connection that transcended words, a silent understanding forged in the crucible of adversity. When a great war had ravaged Europe, the brothers, barely out of their teens, had answered the call to arms. They had fought side by side in the hellish trenches of Verdun, their youthful faces smeared with mud and fear as they endured the relentless bombardment and the constant threat of death. Marcus, the elder by two minutes, had earned a reputation for his cool head under fire. His ability to assess a situation and make split-second decisions that often meant the difference between life and death. Charles, with his keen intellect and sharp wit, had served as a medic, his gentle hands patching up the wounds of his comrades, while his mind grappled with the senselessness of the slaughter. The war had left its mark on both brothers, physically and emotionally. Marcus bore a jagged scar across his left cheek, a souvenir of a grenade blast that had nearly taken his life. Charles carried the weight of countless lives he had been unable to save, the faces of fallen comrades forever etched in his memory. Yet through it all, their bond had only strengthened, a lifeline in a sea of despair. Returning to their farm after the armistice, they had tried to resume their lives. Marcus, ever the pragmatist, had taken over the running of the farm, his hands finding solace in the familiar rhythms of planting and harvesting. Charles, haunted by the ghosts of war, had sought refuge in education, becoming a teacher at the local school, hoping to instill in the next generation the values of peace and understanding. 
the idyllic interlude of peace had been shattered with the Nazi invasion of France in 1940. The brothers, their fighting spirit rekindled, had joined the nascent resistance movement without hesitation. Marcus's intimate knowledge of the Forêt d'Olion, its hidden paths and secret clearance, had proved invaluable. Charles, with his network of former students, then their families had established lines of communication and supply that etched across the occupied territory. For four long years, they had led a double life. Farmers by day, resistance fighters by night. Their initial acts of defiance had been small but significant sabotaging German vehicles, disrupting communication lines, distributing clandestine newspapers that dared to speak the truth. As the war dragged on, their actions had grown bolder, their network expanding, their resolve hardening. As they sat in their forest sanctuary, the weight of their latest mission pressed heavily upon them. Their eyes met, and in that silent exchange, a lifetime of shared experiences spoke volumes. The risks were immense, but so was the potential reward. A successful mission could cripple German supply lines, disrupt their communications, and pave the way for the liberation of France. To shared nod, a silent vow sealed between brothers, they rose, their movements fluid and purposeful, they were ready to face whatever the coming night might bring. Their fate, and perhaps the fate of their nation, hung in the balance. Hidden away in their forest hideouts, cleaning weapons and studying maps, the weight of their latest mission pressed heavily upon them. The brothers exchanged a glance, a lifetime of unspoken communication passing between them. They knew the risks, but also the necessity of what they were about to attempt. For France, for freedom, and for each other, they would face whatever challenges lay ahead. They all called out, Vive la France!